God exists and existed before the creation of the world, in perfect harmony, Father, Son and Spirit, sharing in perfect community, intimacy and fellowship with no need for anything outside of himself. So if God is this perfect and complete being, sharing in total love, companionship and joy, why did he make creation? And even more to the point, why did he make you and me? What was the point? Genesis 1, 26 to 28 talks about how God created human beings. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves along the ground. So if nothing else, we can say that our creation was a deliberate act of God. It wasn't an accident. God meant to do it. This passage is almost like a scene in the throne room of God as he announces to all the heavenly beings the pinnacle in his purposes in creation, the making of mankind. So we are not accidental. God meant to make mankind, and he meant to create you. But why? Putting aside all that creation says about the glory of God, his power, majesty, wisdom, etc., the world was created as a place where human beings could live, work, and thrive. It's an environment God made to sustain us. Psalm 104 talks of the creation and how he made it and sustained it, showing that he's still involved with it moment by moment. Let's read some. He makes springs pour water into ravines. It flows between the mountains. He gives water to all the beasts of the field, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the air nest by the waters, they sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread to sustain his heart. So God fully intends for us to be alive, we're not accidents, and he made us to be part of this creation. But there's far more to it than that. God made the world so that we could exist, and as the pinnacle of his creation, he made us, men and women, boys and girls, in his image. And whatever that may mean in its fullest sense, the very least it means is that God made us to join in the very heart of fellowship, if we're made in his image, then we're capable of being included in the fellowship of the Godhead. It shows that both God intended and that because of all he's done for us in Jesus, that he still intends for us to share in the most intimate of all relationships, the one that existed before the world was created, the fellowship of the Father, Son and Spirit. In other words, I exist to belong to God and to enjoy him forever. This is grace, that God made the whole of creation so that you and I could be included in the greatest relationship of all, the relationship at the heart of the Godhead. How can I say this? Let's look at the prayer of Jesus in John 17. Let me pick out a few bits to clarify. John 17 3 says this, this is Jesus speaking, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So the real essence of our being, what Jesus calls eternal life, isn't just existing, but to know God and to know Jesus. And this doesn't just mean to know about God and to know about Jesus, but to experience a real and living relationship with him, a relationship that will not end and that begins as we start to understand all that God's done for us through Jesus and responds to that grace. But Jesus continues in verse 20 to 26. My prayer is also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's going to be us. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, so that we're going to be joined together as one in the same way that Jesus and the Father are joined in the fellowship of the Godhead. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 
So this is Jesus asking that we would be involved in that Godhead, just as I've been explaining. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and I myself may be in them. This prayer is all about the eternal relationship I've been talking about and the effects it has on those who become all that God intended them to become, who take their place in this eternal fellowship. It shows that we are made for relationship first and foremost to be included in the fellowship of the Godhead but also to allow that incredible relationship to transform our relationships with other people. In other words, we are changed by this relationship, changed in our attitude to other people, especially to those who follow Jesus. By that love we are transformed into a community that is so radically different to the way that the world lives and loves that it defies explanation outside of the supernatural involvement of God himself. And secondly, his love transforms our attitudes towards those who don't know Jesus as we start to long to tell them about the joy and the privilege we've been given and that they can be included too. So, why did God make me? The first answer is grace. He didn't have to make us, but in his incredible and overwhelming love, he chose to create you and me and to give us a place in the fellowship of love that is at the heart of the Godhead. Father, Son and Spirit. And secondly, he made us for community. We are made in the image of God who exists in perfect and continual community and so we're communal beings. We need community and because this world is fallen and not what it should be and because he loves us so much, he's made a community for us to be part of both now and forever. The community of those who love and follow Jesus the living and reigning Lord of all. So, that's why he made you, and that's why he made us. And it begs a question, are you being all that God made you to be? Or do you need to get right with God and take your place in the community of those who love and follow Jesus and who are included in the fellowship of the Godhead forever? My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching and keep your eyes open for more noodles to come.